Dr. Durga Shankar Ghor is being felicitated. Dr. Bulu Shaha is felicitating Dr. G.P. Sharma.
given an invitation for attending this function. I shall try to come again as and when you will call me in this college. I must come and as Minister Independent Charge of Ayush, I can assure you that I must extend my all support and help to this institution. Institution. And now I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Kachal Bhattacharya to kindly say a few words on this occasion. Our beloved minister and all the dignitaries in the dais and also our dear students and colleagues. In Parliamentary Secretary, Dr. Nirmal Maji and also our Ayush Minister, later on. So all the government colleges are developed day by day without any limit. Really very much busy day by day about our own interests. So, I like to thank all that they are interested this type of academic interest. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would now like to call upon Dr. G.P. Sharkar, who is the Managing Director of Annual Laboratories, to please come and say a few words. Minister Sri Ashish Banerjee, invitation of this organization that is Mohesh Bhattacharji, Homeopathy Medical College and Hospital. It is very important that though homeopathic and IELTS department is developing, but it is still that far behind with the modern science. Though we are claiming the homeopathy the best, homeopathy can cure all the disease, particularly chronic disease, where there is no, in fact, medicine in the modern science. Till then, we are not achieving our expectations. And for that, I think, Mr. Kuda, Dr. Kuda Box, that there are so many medicines in Ayurveda already been recognized since long. But from those we can develop our homeopathic medicine. In drug rules, there is two systems of homeopathic medicines. One formulations, other already been recognized in the pharmacopoeia of homeopathy, whatever whether homeopathic pharmacopoeia of India or other countries pharmacopoeia, but till then the Ayurvedic medicine selected so many medicines can be developed and can be included in the homeopathic pharmacopoeia of India. But clinical trial we can uh, and so many medicines, if it is included in the homeopathic pharmacopoeia, then doctors will be benefited because we know homeopathy treat the patient, not the disease. So, no man is alike. No. So, homeopathic medicines also should be according to the nature, behavior, and the so many things you know, India, though you know that homeopathy started or discovered or founded in Germany, but homeopathy developed in India, particularly from West Bengal. So particularly, definitely we should come forward for its betterment and thank you all. And I am very happy to be here. Definitely I will come again and again whenever you will <laughs> invite me. Thank you. Mr. Ashish Banerjee is taking his leave. He is a little busy. Thank you so much, sir, for coming for the program. The director of 
Sarina Publishing Company to please come and say a few words on this occasion. On the dais. But they were in the audience before me. I've come here not to speak anything but to hear something from the scientists. We do not know yet how homeopathic medicine acts on the body and what is in the homeopathic medicine. As because I am from the pharmaceutical side, from the manufacture of homeopathic medicine, I wish to know what the medicine, what we are giving to you, what is the content and how to access, how to assess the quality of the medicine. So this type of seminar, I think that will give us an opportunity to go deep inside the scientific theory of homeopathy and homeopathic medicine. And I expect Professor Kudabox is here, Professor Kudabox is here, uh, Dr. Meher, Peter Mehra is here. From them, we will be able to learn so many things about homeopathic medicine. Members of the diet, to please uh, take the seats. Scientifically acceptable evidence-based hypothesis to explain the molecular basis of action of homeopathic drugs, particularly for ultra high diabetic remedies. He is a PhD and former head of the Department of Zoology, University of Kalyan. Come on the stage and felicitate Dr. Anasur Rahman Kudagash with flowers and the prestigious Victoria. suspected that the nanoparticles of the drug have certain roles in homeopathic medicines and its actions. 
then there is no meaning. Why at all the chromosomes? What for? You all know now that the chromosomes create the hereditary material or DNA. And DNA actually contains the genes and the genes. Whether the potentized homeopathic drugs like Arnica and others, they could really modulate. And if we could track down properly and compare it with the placebo, that is the Sakas ethanol, then we can suggest that if this mechanism must be evolved in order for the chromosomes or the DNA to be repaired. So that was the beginning. Because sperm are very important in transmitting the genetic trait to the next generation. So any information or the genetical print will be carried to the sperm. So if there is abnormality of the sperm, there could be some kind of deformity. That is the reason why we focused our attention also on the sperm head anomaly. The micronuclei are sure sign of chromosomal breakage. These are very important because, as I told you, had the controls also shown the similar kind of repair as shown by the homeopathic drug, so it contains no meaning. So we diluted unsuccess alcohol, no diluted alcohol, water, and with that we also study pre-treatment, post-treatment, both pre and post-treatment, and we conducted studies on not only Arnica Montana, but we can see below Avogadro limit, but above that, 30 C, 200 C, far, far above, 10 to the power minus 60, 10 to the power minus 400. No question of the existence of the initial drug substance at all. So we have studied several parameters. But the genes which are made for repairing the chromosome and chromosomal damage. So when I administer Arnica 30, and there is very definite repair of the damage, then I can suggest that it has been repaired by the drug itself. So, ジェノトクシカルマーキングエクスプライダーナムエクジェノトクシカルマーキングエクスプライダーナムキャディアムライダーそうアルセニアルセニアルマン30CI バイトプロテクトウェンエクトランスクリプションロッカーバーズギブン
our liver and other tissues to show how the homeopathic drug progressively modifies the structures towards recovery. See how the victims are suffering. And Dr. Devar Siddhar perhaps knows because he also he is one of the team members, Dr. Saifu Hopper is us and both of them assisted us in the human trial that we made. And you can see this kind of things very much. So, yourself. So the effects, then we tried to deploy a homeopathy, three homeopathic drugs to thalassemic patients. Thalassemia is also a genetic disease, you know. The beta chain is disturbed by a gene mutation, and that is why we wanted to see whether we could help the thalassemia patients who got stagnant with hydroxyurea treatment by the homeopathic doctors. And it also was wonder. We tested three drugs and you know these are different parameters that we took and this thing called a ferritin level, little augmentation of HPF, decreased size of me, you know, this, you know. So another way whether we could help the cancer patients. You know, cancer is a very deadly disease which are associated with cancer, only we do not know the actual cure. This step process is involved some genes to mutate and because of that. So if we can show that certain homeopathic drugs have positive modulatory effect, then we can also deduce that they are working on the proto-oncogene which is converted to oncogene. We are trying to report them back. There are several promoters. It is, there is another promoter to induce this particular time. There are Dane, there are DMV and others. All along, we try to show externally whether it is possible to show you from external appearance of the mouse, we produce the papilloma kind of tumor and then we try to treat them with sickly cord. Let us see what happens. You can see that in the normal mice, we develop cancer by DMDA and total oil as promoted. And you can see this is the placebo effect left, down. And gradually, the papillomas <coughs> have gone away. And you can see that they are living healthily. Now, this is the beauty of the homeopathy medicine. We have tried seeking for 30 on this particular cancer time and it really showed wonderful effects. Now, now, in this study, we have been able to show the pathway of signaling pathway. What signals are emitted or triggered by CKL report and how they are working wonders to get the papilloma. And we have tested several, several, these are very expensive experiments in treating cancer and showing, screening several drugs which have positive effects, regular disease and which is rampant, very predominant in the world now. So we have again studied the insulin group to group whole genes. You know, we are attempting to see what is happening to the genes which are responsible for diabetes or removal of diabetes. And we have been able to show not only by the CPSP, there are other uh, there are genema and the cerebrum we have tested. Of course, these studies were conducted with uh, uh, my mother teachers. These are pioneering discoveries. And this discovery is really, really very thought-provoking. Now, we have, as I told you, initially we've done it in case of uh, uh, mammalian model, mice. And now uh, we want it, because so many systems are there in eukaryote. The brain is there, the, the autonomous nervous system, autonomic nervous system, equalized to UV radiation. Now, we have equalized those response initially we have detected, then I just give you the actual result part. We have seen all the aspects. 
And now I give you that three genes are mainly responsible for repair. Now, if bacterium is having only, this is a naked nucleus, one circular gene, nothing. And I put homeopathic drug, I put that first to UV irradiation, and this UV repair mechanism is thoroughly understood. It is thoroughly understood. And what is expected is to trigger the activity of nuclear A, nuclear B, nuclear C genes. So there are specified action of this. Also studied now in in vitro system. Well, if you say that polium, then you have to say that there must be involvement of the genes. They are not being regulated by brain or anything else. It and glucose 30. You know, we got glucose 30 C prepared by oil. And we got arnica 30. You know, we intoxicated the bacteria with our arsenic in some. And what happened? Now, when arsenic was given, they induced those particular genes which are meant for actually uh, removal of arsenic and tolerance of arsenic, or say arsenic. But when we gave the glucose, because you know, as you see, for arsenic treatment, what happens is there is formation of less ATP half. So ATP is needed for the expulsion. There is a pump, arsenic pump. So for the formation of ATP, glucose is the primary source. And you know glucose, one phosphate, glucose, fructose, phosphate, and pyruvic acid like this, all the states of glycolysis. <coughs> so what happens is from one mole, four mole actually, is the ATP prepared instead of A. So, glucose will be very readily accepted by the organism. And when we gave glucose 30 C, from the minimum medium, the residual glucose they consume. What did he even? When we gave glucose 30 C, they behave like giving real glucose in the medium. And they triggered the gene action. We have experiments at the genetic level. Now membrane potential, these are some confirmatory, very intricate type of days, which shows whether it is the mitochondrial part mediated, whether the enzymes involved are within the mitochondria or not. We have made bacteriophage and bacteria experiment. Bacteriophage Fudges are like virus particles, viruses. They specifically infect from the bacteria, E. coli. This part 5174. For one year it took only to standardize the control plaque formation for eating E. coli, and those plaques represent the size from where the bacteria have been eaten up by the virus. And if you do not give them any medical help, what happens is the left side, where a large number of plaques will be seen. And we have chosen several which are claimed to have antiviral effects. They do have anti-viral effect because when I administer these drugs and I have given Econite, Belladonna, and other drugs, Arnica. Arnica is a drug not having antiviral capacity. So, you can see for yourself. And then, I have seen what is the E gene. You know, the virus enters as a DNA only. That in in animal, DNA, and all. But what one point I will mention about the nano encapsulation and nano precipitation. It's a very clever experiment by which we took four five mother tinctures of homeopathic medicines and tried to see whether they can nanoprecipitate. It's a very simple experiment. This hypothesis has gained so much of momentum that my Western colleagues who used to ignore our work, now they are citing our work and giving us the credit for this. Now, what we really did is that, what is there are receptors and cells that they have recognized, depending perhaps 
on their structure of nanoparticles. I want to raise certain issues in such research works to say the main criticism of homeopathy is protein digestion. And beyond a whole glucose number, if there is any medicine, how it acts. So, once you know that in the Lancet, there was a publication that homeopathy is nothing but a placebo. That means, as there is no material molecule above 12 say potency, so there is no action of the homeopathic medicine as we have claimed in our clinical practice. Here, the contribution of Dr. Koda Box is to show that yes, although there is no material molecule, but it acts. But still, the concept is there is no concept of homeopathy. Please keep in mind, whenever we say this is homeopathy, the basic thing will be that we have given one medicine or whatever, maybe on the basis of following the law of community. Please try to understand the difference between the two. One, to study the action of potentized medicine. It is not a homeopathy. Just, no, no. We have to understand that one also. There is a difference between two things. Well, study of action of micro doses potentized medicine. It may be A, it may be B, it may be C. Then we give it on certain tissue level or vivo in vitro and if it has some effect. The first one, the case it acts. But how? But gradually decreasing the material molecule. Think of the concept of Dr. Bendis' experiment. What he did, or you know, perhaps gradual dilution. And another one, dilution is suppression. And he saw when we are giving suppression, there is some effect. But the question is that how? The medicinal property is being transferred to the vehicle. It is a question to be answered by the physicist or chemist. Please keep in mind. Already medicine has prepared, it has action. Okay. But how the medicinal property is being transferred to the vehicle during the process of putting condition? That is very, very important. We are giving one by hundred, then from one again one by hundred like that. And after Whenever you are giving the medicine, there is no material molecule. How it can retain the memory of the original drug substance? That is very, very important. In this regard, I must mention one of the works of the Dr. Rustam Rai from Stanford University. Uh, he is working, he is uh, basically was a structural engineer. In fact, I have not prepared to chair this session. If we give homeopathic individualized medicine on the basis of the propriety of the symptoms, then only patient improve. It may be lycopodium, it may be arsenic, it may be others different according to the constitution of the patient. But our objection is that we fail miserably to prescribe arsenic in all cases who are suffering from chronic arsenic toxicity. Yes, you know, which we are giving uh, lycopodium it acts. But in another case, when you are giving sulfur, it is not acting. So uh, there are a lot of things to be done in homeopathy. Even my, uh, 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 the new generation should try to contribute in this field. I again thank you Dr. Kodamok for his works in this field. Uh, often we use the word homeopathy loosely, but truly speaking, we should not say that it is purely a homeopathy research. It may be research on microdilution of medicine. Thank you. We should not be dogmatic or orthodox. Science is something very free, open, right? We are going after science. We always keep in mind Rikaju. We know. We are very. I have carried on research for 35 years. I have published papers on homeopathy more than 100, not one. So my experience, from my experience, what I suggest is open to anyone to accept or not accept. But what I feel is correct, I stand by it and I say that my kind of research 
should be done and taken up by all the open-minded researchers in order to understand the very intricate science which is in Congress in Thank you very much. So Mr. Gupta is being felicitated by Dr. Maina Mal. She will present her paper very soon. As research officer for your at Central Research Institute for Homeopathy, Noida, one of the Institute of Central Council for Research in Homeopathy, New Delhi, under the aegis of Ministry of Ayush. She is the coordinator for drug proving research program being carried out by the Council. She has also been given additional responsibility as coordinator for benign prostate hypothesis RCT study, diabetic distance symmetry polyneuropathy RCT study, and site investigator for research study on iron deficiency anemia, ignored by the Council for Tripura Post on Health Promotion, being conducted by National Printer Mehra to deliver speech on the topic, human pathogenetic trial. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, is it present here? To research, so this is the homeopathic pathogenetic trial which I will be talking about. Is the basic source for information in the homeopathic material. And until and unless we go through this procedure, understand the symptoms which are produced by each drug, and the symptoms of a drug as compared to the gross toxicological symptoms evident from the animal studies, the homeopathic pathogenetic trials are being carried out ever on apparently heavy human beings. Dr. Kudagar, what he has told is the the standardization of the process because it is a uh, very very uh, intricate thing that we are experimenting on the healthy human beings and trying to produce the symptoms. So it is very important to have a standardized procedure for doing this proving from the program. And the quality of proving studies which are being published globally, this is also a great concern whether we are actually getting the correct symptomatology of the drugs what has happened in, uh, from 1790, from the time of Dr. Honeyman, till date the things have changed a lot. The methodology of proving which was adopted by Dr. Honeyman and today it's very, very different. So two, there are the three main organizations are Liga Medicorum, Homeopathic Internationalist, that is LNHI, which we know commonly as Liga also. Then we have the European Committee of Homeopathy and the Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia Convention of the United States. Phase 1 is the research trial as per the Convention System of Medicine and Homeopathic Drug Proving is also coming as a Phase 1 clinical trial. In the Convention System, it is to do what to do to reduce the risk of serious toxic effects of the drugs and over here we are trying to induce something to generate the symptomatology or find the symptoms in, a, in the healthy human volunteers. The research committee was constituted by the government of India and this being a very very important aspect in homeopathic field, this was taken up as a research program by the homeopathic research committee in 1963. Subsequently, Central Council for Research in Homeopathy, it took over and from 1979 onwards, this has been one of the major priority areas for the council to carry out the drug today. The main focus area, apart from that, Recently, the Scientific Advisory Committee of the Council has advised to take up the allopathic drugs, potentize them, like allopathic drugs of, uh, which are commonly used like paracetamol and prosin, etc. Potentize them and then do the proving on that also. The program is uh, funded by the Council uh, under the Ministry of IU and the total office for uh, this is in Noida. The journal is going to be the coordinator for this program. So I am here. Of you. He is the principal investigator. Dr. B.S. Arya is a rural officer who is the officer in charge in uh, Noida. 
and uh, I'm the coordinator for this program. And I have a assistant coordinator at full time. Another uh, SDRI is Lucknow. Then we have here in Calcutta, uh, Dr. Anjali Chatterjee, Regional Research Institute, Calcutta. Over there, Dr. P. S. Chakravarti is the uh, proving master, or I say the site investigator. Apart from there, we have also received uh, requests from certain colleges that they also want to carry out research, uh, drug proving research in their own institutes. So the council has agreed to give them technical support in the way that uh, the drug proving protocol which has been designed by the council and is uh, applied, implicated. So that will be uh, given to them. And further to that, the uh, guidance, the technical support in the sense training will be given to the staff, whosoever is uh, taking part in the drug proving program over there. Done by uh, Dr. Herring, Dr. Honeyman. Whatever has been noted in the books, can we really, really rely on that? What medicines we are getting now for prescription, the therapeutic uses which have been defined as trapping, are they still valid today? That is another question, very, very important question. So, we have to take up these steps to do the research. And if the guidelines are clearly defined, we will be able to do it in a better way. Uh, uh, revise our protocol in a great way by incorporating the guidelines of the three organizations which I have already noted down previously LMHI, ECH, and FBUS. The terminology is so defined will construct an authentic homeopathy criteria medica, which is not only for the profession but for the patients actually, so that we know the therapeutic use of each drug, whatever sphere of action has been known. In addition to that, are we having something more to do with it? If yes, then what? And we can help out in that way. So, drug which is considered as a clinical trial and that also on the human being. So, it comes under that to view. So, very important. Another aspect is about the investigation of human substance or the drug which we are giving is procured only from the good medicine. So these are following these good medical practice and they have been certified. So whatever medicines are procured, whatever drugs are procured from them are only applied for drug proving procedure. Randomized placebo controlled study. The type is interventional, allocation is randomized. The verum and placebo uh, ratio is unbalanced. 70% of the volunteers are given verum, the drug, and 30% are on placebo. The masking is double blind. Neither the investigator knows which medicine is being or which drug is being proved, uh, and he also doesn't know that which volunteer is getting the drug and which volunteer is getting the placebo. Very very important when we are asking. Suppose if somebody is uh, a patient comes and he says, "Okay, uh, doctor, I am having cough." Okay, whether it is uh, you have any expectoration or it's a dry cough. Okay. He says, uh, I'm having expectorations. Persons having uh, known history of allergies, food hypersensitivity, etc. are also to be excluded. Women during pregnancy, puerperium, and while breastfeeding, and those who have undergone hysterectomy are to be excluded again. The first part, where I, what I have told you, the inclusion exclusion criteria is there, so those points are to be considered during the first screening of the volunteers. We accept the application forms from the college students and also from non homeopathic background if they are related to the uh, college or even around the institute, they also are welcome. Analysis by the proving team to extract dependable homeopathic prescribing indications from the study as per the following dimensions. So once uh, we as the, at the nodal office, when we receive the documents from each center, it's a multi-centric study, so minimum two centers are given the same drug for proving. So when we get the booklets back or the information back, then we compile it and further analyze it to extract what can be the indications. And on three dimensions we have to assess it. The first dimension is all the symptoms are during proving are to be collectively written at one place. Second dimension is proving symptoms with relative characterization. Somewhere you will find some modality, somewhere you will find some causation, some occurring during proving period, which are possibly related to the investigation of proving substance. The 
this is the basic definition. Again, I'll say, in the routine also, somebody is having tendency to cup and cold. So, it has rained, the person has got wet in rain and has got, uh, started getting squeezing. So, the, uh, the prover has written, squeezing since yesterday from so and so time. And what was the cause? When the proving master is elaborating over that, the proving master must ask this question whether there was anything else to do or it was only the drug substance which was prescribed, not previously experienced. That is, uh, we have uh, marked it as NS. Unexpected change representing worsening or aggravation of ongoing or recurring symptoms. So this is worsening, unexpected worsening of the thing. Then unexpected change representing an improvement of ongoing or recurring symptoms, that is C plus. Then unexpected recurrence of past symptoms, abnormal values of laboratory parameters that were in the normal range during the pre-medical examination. Uh, further being done with the qualitative as well as quantitative analysis. The qualitative analysis, symptom selection, the symptom belongs to the remedy, will get probability because occurrence of the symptom in two or more volunteers. Again, I am saying, like we are uh, giving the drug at at least two centers, one at Noida, one at Kotayam. So the environmental conditions are different, the uh, habits are different, for individualized what we say, that is totally different. There will be symptoms appearing in more than two provers at two different study sites. Then PQRS, symptoms appearing from prior provings, we have some data, Previously, we are reproving certain drugs. So, if we find that these symptoms were already present in the previous proving sites, again we are finding it there. So, these are graded as grade 1 symptoms. And incidence of proving symptoms in each trial will be calculated by dividing the number of volunteers who had at least one reported proving symptom by the total number of volunteers taking the proving substance and not placebo. See, benefits to the subject or to others. Do you think that ultra dilutions uh, of the medicine which we are prescribing can produce such harmful effect? Are we sure about it? See, for identification of adverse events and their management, the HPCUS guidance are being adapted. Adverse events are all unwanted and clinically significant illnesses, diseases, injuries or accidents occurring or worsening in severity during the study period, no matter whether they are causally related to study intervention or not. So during the uh, drug proving program, if anybody suffers from any uh, disease or even accident, that is to be noted as adverse event. Adverse drug reaction, an adverse event, causality of which can be defined, uh, definitely linked to the investigation proving substance can be identified as adverse drug reaction. Therefore, what I told you, this is the uh, major thing which we have introduced now, that as per the totality of the symptoms presented by the prover at that point of time, the site investigator has all the right to prescribe the medicine most suitable to antidote the uh, the effect of the proving substance at that point of time for the action. Similarly, the reasons for withdrawal from the study are to be noted. See, when, the, uh, when a person volunteers to be a participant in the study, he or she has got all the rights to withdraw from the study also. We can try the first safe dilution. When we say it is beyond Avogadro's number, 12C is beyond Avogadro's number. And if we want to take up a trial where we want to uh, see the action of 6C potency. So whether it is safe, because there we can find some molecular uh, substances. So what is the first safe addition that is to be worked out? Really uh, uh, privileged to tell that till date, council has proved 98 drugs and data of 90 drugs has been published. The books which have been published, six books containing drug proving data of 79 drugs has been published by the council and the drug monographs published till date are 90. And I am very thankful to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Any questions for the audience?
is based on drag theory. And so we, might, we shall have to go through drag theory in very meticulous. But the problem with what is drag theory is how to get healthy human beings, how to get healthy tubers. Who are the healthy tubers? The protocol doesn't say in only a few words about healthy tubers, but is that okay? The second question is the proving must be done with uh, potent now, now the protocol says proving is to be done with potentized medicines only, not with basic basic raw material. But our whole material medica is based on basic proving of basic raw material. My question will be whether the proving with basic raw material and the proving with potentized medicine will be the same. I must appreciate the mayor for his for a meticulous, very meticulous information about the protocols to be followed during drug proving. And thank her. I thank her again. Total was 287. I watched the Anderson from the college. Those who get the present. The panel discussion was in the form of question and answers. Two, there are two aspects. One is manufacturing of medicine, other is testing or standardization of medicine. For manufacturing of medicine, what we have read in the book is, we shall have to try to take by hand. But at present, none of the manufacturing units are using trituration made by hand. They are all triturating with machines, they are different type of machines. But the principle must be followed. That means, we shall have to triturate it. Uh, at least sit there for, for one hour. This will be followed for trituration by machine. For potentization, liquid potentization, liquid attenuation. Uh, actually, that has been done by manual process. The manual process is we shall have to dilute the back material. If you go by centesimal, one to ninety-nine is okay. But shaking is done by mechanical process, not by hand, as we call. This mechanical process will give you exactly the pressure you require. All the time, uniform pressure will be applied there. If you shake by hand, all the time you won't get uniform pressure. And that uh, actually differs from one person to another. In fact, if you want to prepare the new graph, you must have some standardization. If we start a new thing, which is not within the pharmacopoeia. First, we have to standardize the collection of the original drug substance. Proof. Proof. Suppose he wants to have potentized HIV. So, first thing is you have to collect purely that HIV virus. But another problem is there. During Hanuman's time, science is not so much developed. As a result of which, they can take something new and start some uh, medicine, preparation of the medicine, prove it, and use it clinically. Regarding no salts, uh, there are four groups, N1, N2, N3, and N4, these four. The N1 and N2, endotoxin N1, the uh, disintegrated body and their endotoxin is N1, N2 is exotoxin, secreted you know, like the theta like that. And uh, N3, N3 is pure toxin. This is the thing for your information. So I think we have Dr. Prita Mehra here. She would probably convey this message to Dr. Manchandra that we need more improving on these drugs. Today, you should go beyond the organism not being developed, except oxidoxinum and leptospirosis. So before going for or checking for any feasibility is concerned, I think two, three 
more things to be considered. The handling of the organism, because the newer organism is virulent, like that of Ebola, very contagious and very infectious also. Even HIV, which part we will go for correct? Viruses, so question of identifications of these uh, virulent organisms is required. What instructions we will give pharmacopoeia for collections of these newer organisms? For, because there is no such instructions in the pharmacopoeia. What is the basic concept of homeopathy? Basic concept of disease in homeopathy? The basic concept of animal that the dynamic derangement of vital force is the cause of the disease. So, whenever there is any local disease, whenever any disease, the man is as a whole disease. You may have an eczema on your hand. You may have a boil on your skin. But without involving the vital force, the local manifestation may not, should not occur. So, in homeopathy, the basic concept is treat the patient, not the disease. Don't consider the disease as a local one, consider the patient as a whole. That's why in homeopathy, organon of medicine, there is a key called so-called local disease. Most controversial, most unique, whatever you can say, in homeopathy, that is potentialization. How that concept developed? This is a very important history to be known, and I have going to show you that how the concept of potentization comes in the mind of animal, and that leads to the present controversy. Think about dynamization. Animal only advised that every medicine should be given singly and alone. Only one medicine should be given from the very beginning. In the year 1801, an article was published by Hanneman on the Scarlet Fever. He first given hint that an unusual method of preparation. <laughs> I would like to ask my question to Dr. G.S. Moore. Sir, how can we judge the authenticity and purity of drug cake cannabis? Some of them are vegetable, from vegetable oil kingdom and from animal kingdom. From vegetable kingdom and animal attack from vegetable and animal kingdom. The vegetable kingdom and animal kingdom. From the material, what we are getting from the vegetable kingdom, we shall have to check it first, micro, macroscopically and then microscopically, to be sure whether the material is correct species. It's coming from correct species. Uh, see whether the material what you are using is of correct species or not, and also by uh, microscopically and macroscopically. <coughs> Cancer is at present is extinct. I don't say it's extinct, but it's almost extinct. It is not available commercially. So the medicine, what the you get in the market, the market, especially the mother teachers, are definitely not prepared from cancerous. They have been prepared from some other uh, fly that is called minor this fly. That fly is available in our country, in India. More recently, there is a new word is coming that is pharmacogenomics. What is that pharmacogenomics? The pharmacogenetics is largely used in relation to the genes determining drug metabolism. The latter is a broad-based term that encompasses all genes in the genome that may determine drug response. Pharmacogenetics and genomics is academically not important. What is important to us? The AIG pharmacogenetics and Kothata Kimhobe Essechino. Kotho Essechino, in the year 510 BC, when Pythagoras noted that injection of fever beans resulted in potentially fatal reaction in some, but not all individuals.